In this video, I will show you how to upload your SCORM compliant modules and create a course in Adobe Captivate Prime. Okay, let's get started here. So uh, this is Adobe Captivate Prime that I'm looking at right now. And uh, as, uh, as logged in as I am, of course you can choose uh, one of three different ways to be logged in. You can log in as an administrator, which is a person who will manage the learning management system, make sure that the reports are run when they need to be run and set up the learning management system the way it needs to be set up. You can log in, of course, as an author, which is what I primarily think of myself as, someone who creates content for learners to learn. And then, of course, as a learner, themselves. So um, right now I'm set up as an author because this is one of the tasks that as, a, as an author typically it falls to you to upload your own modules and create courses and that's what we're going to do today here. So when I'm logged in on the getting started section of the uh, Prime LMS uh, you have two choices. You can create modules and create courses and the reason they are two separate things by the way is that you might have uh, shared modules like for example you might have for your company you might have the history of the company as a course um, now that could actually be a module rather not a course but a module that's a part of other courses so if i'm a salesperson in the organization i should probably know the history of the company if I'm a carpenter or an electrician or something like that, I may also need to know the history of the company. But the introduction course that I take may also include things that are specific to being a carpenter or being an electrician or in the earlier example, being a salesperson. So you might have a, a combination of different modules. The other reason to have modules, of course, is the simple fact is, is that let's say you have 100 lessons or modules in a particular course and suddenly um, lesson 99 becomes obsolete. You can pull that one module out of your course, continue to make the course available, and either update or maybe replace that, that module with uh, something else in the future, uh, all the while uh, not stopping people's progress in completing their courses. So here's the process, as straightforward as I can make it here. I've published a couple of little mini modules on uh, Canadian geography and Canadian politics, and uh, we're going to upload those now to the learning management system. So let's start off by clicking Create Modules. And we need to give each module its own unique name. So I'm going to call the first one Geography. And I'll just put a description. In this module, you will learn about Canadian geog geography. There we go. And uh, what's the duration? This is a very short course, so I'll just put five minutes. Uh, is it shared or is it private? In other words, do I want to share this module with all the other authors out there and allow them to use it as part of creating their own courses? Or, you know, is this something more proprietary and I don't want to share it? I would choose private in that case. In this case, I'll leave it as shared because I'm okay with sharing. And I'm going to upload my content. You see this little placeholder here? This is where your content's going to reside. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to give me an open dialog window and uh, I'm going to select the SCORM compliant file there. It's a zip file. We'll hit open and we can add some tags to this particular module. So we could say um, Canada could be one tag. Geography, you know, all the obvious stuff. Um, general knowledge, things like that. Once you've got all your tags in there, you hit save. Now save does two things. It saves all the stuff that you've put on your screen, but it also uploads the SCORM compliant package. So we'll see that happen right now.
Obviously, longer courses will take more time. So you see this, uh, it's processing this uh, content and it will set it at version 01 once it's complete. In the meantime, however, we can continue to add our other module that we have on politics. So let's quickly do that. Politics, this module is on Canadian politics, duration, five minutes shared. Let's upload that. Tags, politics, Canada, that's good enough. So let's hit save and we'll upload the second of the two modules that are going to be used to complete this course on the country of Canada. So uh, some processing needs to occur, but you can see already that the geography module that we uploaded first is now available as one of the modules that can be used to create a course. So at this stage, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the My Courses section. Remember, we're logged in as an author. So My Courses, not to be confused with the courses that I would need to complete as a learner. So we'll continue to let that process. You don't need to wait for it. I'm going to hit My Courses. And I've done this once before, so there's a retired version of the course. But at this point, I'm going to add a new course. So here's where I give it a name. So I'm going to call it Canada. And you have an opportunity to have a short description and an overview. An overview would be a little bit longer. This one is the short description is 140 characters. Uh, the longer description is up to 500 characters in length. So. I'm going to just put the same thing in for both. Uh, in this course, you will learn the basic knowledge required to discuss the country of Canada with your peers or something like that. I'm just going to copy and paste that into the overview as well. Uh, presumably in the overview, I would put more detailed information about the course. So here's where we can actually create our modules. Now there's two ways um, that you can actually set this up. There are, well, several ways really. The content itself. So you can actually publish your material as just learning content and you can do all sorts of stuff. Um, you're not limited to just e-learning content. As you can see here, I self-paced modules, which is primarily where I'm going to live because I'm an e-learning developer, uh, designer developer. And uh, that's, you know, most of the time I'm going to be uploading some kind of SCORM compliant e-learning package. But I could also attach a virtual classroom to this course so that the learner must log in and complete a virtual classroom. Uh, perhaps with, um, I'm not certain about this, but let's say something like Adobe Connect or Saba Virtual Classroom or, or something along those lines. Classroom modules, this is where a, a learner needs to attend an actual physical classroom. Um, and of course, the scheduling of, of physical real world training can be done with the Adobe Captivate Prime LMS as well. You're not just limited to online content. And of course, activity modules. Now, activity modules could be simply attending a workshop or maybe it's simply read a particular author's book uh, so that you gain the knowledge from that as well. In this case, we're going to stick with self-paced module. And here's all of the modules that are available. Uh, presumably, you would have uploaded your, your module um, you know, in in the first place. Now, notice a couple things here, and this is important. Uh, the type of course, these are Captivate courses that I've created here, the politics, the geography, but also you could have uploaded simply a video um, or perhaps a PowerPoint uh, could uh, certainly be uploaded and that could be just something someone wants to view. Um, a document file, Word document file, 
And of course, um, a PDF would be an option as well. So if you had job aids that were associated with a particular learning. In this case, we're going to stick with the Captivate stuff here. So I'm going to first of all select the politics and I can right at the same time select, well, let's do something a little different. We'll choose politics right now and we'll hit done. So that's now part of the course, but maybe we're going to make the pre-work, right? That geography course. And that's an option for you as well. You could just simply put them together both under content. But for fun, we'll just try something a little different here. So that's the pre-work that's required. So we have, uh, the, they take the politics course, but before they do that, they have to take the geography course. You could also add um, test out modules, which are simply almost like pre-tests where the learner can then skip the content if they prove themselves successful in completing these modules. It allows them to skip out the the content modules here at the top the sequence for modules uh, you can make it random um, if there's no importance over uh, what order something is done random is perfectly acceptable however if it's required that they complete learning in a certain order um, for example where uh, things are foundational and the uh, the core training will be uh, something that is built upon that foundation probably ordered would make more sense here. My stuff doesn't require that. So I'm just going to click on the top icon here to bring me back to the top here. And I'm ready to hit save. Now, when you hit save, it brings you to the next screen where you can add additional prerequisites. So for example, uh, you must complete, um, you know, um, organizational 101 before you do anything else. So that could be a prerequisite. You can't take this course until you've done that other course. You also can uh, can specify skills. This is a requirement. And uh, we'll just, uh, you know, so far the only skill that's been established here is general. Um, and we'll just put level one. And this course could be worth five credits, let's say. You can actually change the enrollment type from self-enroll to either manager, management uh, nominated or manager approval required. But we'll leave it self-enroll for now. Uh, it's pulled the tags out of the, the course modules themselves, but you could add additional tags at this point if you thought that was necessary. And also you could uh, specify who should take this course. There's uh, an opportunity to add additional resources, like let's say, for example, if you had a PDF guide, uh, or maybe there's a policy document that needs to be associated with this course, that could be placed at this point. I don't have such a, an example of that, so we'll proceed and we'll hit save. Um, oh, it can't be more than the max credits. Well, let's just make this one credit. <laughs> There we go. So our course has been saved successfully here and uh, we can actually go back to uh, the overview and everything looks good. Settings, just double check everything. Everything looks good. You could preview this as a learner right now, but unfortunately you wouldn't be able to see how the course interacts with the learning management system. So let's change our view from being an author to a learner and see if we can find this course and take a look at it. So here's um, here's my, my view as a learner. Uh, of course, I could add my own avatar. This would also display any badges that I achieved through uh, taking training on the learning management system. And uh, of course, I could access the catalog and find the courses that I'm looking for. Oh, one thing I forgot to do, let's jump back to being an author again for a moment, is I forgot to publish my course, and that's important to do. So let's take a look at my course catalog. I always forget that step. So here's the course I just created. It's important that you publish the course. Without that, you can continue to work on it, and it's great to not have it published automatically until you do this final step. So now it's published. We can go back as a learner and take a look at uh, for that course there.
So there it is. There's my course that I've created. It's recommended to me. I can I can click on this and uh, take that course. Now you can see it's divided it up pre-work. I've got to take the geography piece and then the core content is the politics piece. And I could have a separate quiz at the end as well. That's an option. Uh, that's just uploading um, you know, your, your quiz component as a separate piece. It's actually built into these courses, so it'll automatically show complete when I pass those, those quizzes. Uh, to enroll, I simply click on the Enroll button, and it shows a little overview of what's going on. Here's the description that I entered below, and of course there's zero of two modules completed. Uh, what levels will I achieve after the course? I will get one credit towards my general level one. And you can see here that the author is Paul. So let's start off with our geography course. We want to complete that. The great thing about um, about the uh, the LMS, the, the Prime LMS, is that it opens it within a window. There's no pop-ups. There's no crazy functionality here. It just straightforward launches the course for you. So here we are learning about Canada. We'll click next to begin. And we read through this. We learn a little bit about how Canada is one of the largest countries in the world and has the common border with the United States, which forms the world's longest land border. That's really interesting. Let me hit next. Oh, it's quiz time now. What did I learn? Uh, what is unique about the border between Canada and the United States? Oh, we just said that. It's the world's longest land border. Let's hit submit and see if we got that correct. Yes, we did. So we got 100% and um, can't see it here, but my continue button is right here. And we're done. So I can close this window. And it's going to update this. Notice that there's a little check mark next to this particular Captivate course. So I know that I've completed one of two modules completed. So it's really straightforward. I know where I'm at in the learning. Now it's time to learn about politics. Let's launch this course. So learning about Canada, let's click next. Here's the basics. So Canada is a federal parliamentary democracy. We have a constitutional monarchy. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II is the current head of state. Most people think it's the prime minister. It's not. Capital is Ottawa. There are two official languages, English and French. So a lot of countries don't have official languages. Okay, quiz time. Who is the current head of state? Well, it's not Justin Trudeau, like you might think, because he's the Prime Minister. It's actually Queen Elizabeth II. Let me hit Submit. Correct. Which of the following are the official languages of Canada? French and English. Submit. Uh, which city is the capital of Canada? That would be Ottawa. We're correct. So here we are. We got 100%. We're done. Uh, nothing further to do at this point here. We can actually exit this by clicking the X button here. And you could actually put those instructions right on the screen so that users know that. And this now updates my course and shows that I got politics. I've got the check mark there. Geography, I got it. My progress is 100% complete. I've completed two of the two module. So I get full credit for this course. So that's it, guys. That's how you upload your modules and create a course in Adobe Captivate Prime. If you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful, useful, or otherwise, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.